Indeed, it's the last one. Well, maybe it'll be quiet tonight. Nurse. Amputation? Mm -hmm. We're out of anesthetic. Then we'll have to do without them. But the shock, Doctor. Can he survive it? Sometimes I think these boys can survive anything. Pete didn't have to go. I should have got that jab. I just couldn't see him. Night blindness. You have to have fresh vegetables to see at night. Hang on, Private. Keep his heart going. Uh, I thought that was it. Hold tight. I can't go out now, nurse. Not now. My wife, Mary, and Mama, I got to tell them something. Pete and me were talking about it. Doc. Keep talking, soldier. I, I've got to write a letter. It's important. Got to write it so so that they know. Hello, Mr. Dumpty. Oh, afternoon, Mr. Lewis. Nothing but the regular monthly bills. Ad from the Emporium. Oh, yes. Uh, here's another little item. A letter from Batan. From Johnny. Mary! Mary! The letter from Johnny! Hey, Chuck, watch those tires. Oh, we'll get more. Don't worry about that stuff. Chuck, Roy, a letter from Johnny. Well, gee, let's have a look. Charles, we all want to see it. Come up on the porch. Me too. Ain't I been bringing his mail ever since Mary sent him his first valentine? Dear Mother and Mary, we haven't got a regular mail now, but I sure hope this one gets through. We've had a pretty bad time here. 
But one thing's made it lots easier for me, thinking how Mary took it when I decided to go. I've been thinking about it for some time. I was worried about what Mary might say. Mary, you want me to do what I think is right, don't you? What? What brought that on, Johnny? Well, they passed the draft today and... Well? I'm not waiting. But we're not in it yet. It's only a question of time. I'm joining. When, Johnny? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Mary, you're not mad, are you? Hey, wait a minute. This isn't our stop. Yes, it is. City Hall. Come on. City Hall, I... Well, if you're joining up tomorrow, we're getting married today. Mary? Come on. And you, Mother. You just said take care of yourself, son. That was all. Nothing's too hard to take for a family like mine. We may have to give up Batan, but it won't be the Japs that beat us. It'll be lack of food and equipment and medicine. When they jumped us, we just weren't ready for them, that's all. Reminds me of the time that I had the trouble with Tuffy when I was a kid. Remember? I got an awful pasting. Guess I just wasn't ready. But when he did get ready, what a trance and I got. <laughs> a long time since anyone called me Tuffy. But you folks have had time now to get ready. A pal of mine, Pete. I wrote you about it. He died because I couldn't see good enough to knock down the Jap that got him. The doc called it night blindness. You get that for not having enough vegetables. We didn't have enough of anything. It's too late to do us here on Batan any good. But it'll win for the others who are carrying this fight. This is the important part. You've all got to do without things. Pete told me a lot of this. He was going to be an accountant. He had a great head for figures. For one thing, don't hoard food. Keep it working. We haven't had anything but a little horse meat and rice for days. I've seen guys cramped up with stomach pains for lack of food. Men like that can't fight. And along the same lines, Mom, don't waste any kitchen fats. Kitchen fats make glycerin, and glycerin makes explosives. Two pounds of fats can fire five anti tank shells. Last year, housewives threw away two billion pounds. You want a new refrigerator, Mom. That's 140 pounds of steel. Two million Americans bought refrigerators last year. Today, they've got to do without. That was enough steel for 20,000 light tanks, for 66,000 anti-aircraft guns, for the hulls of 21 cruisers to sink the Japs. And that brother-in-law of mine, Roy, why, that galoot would never use the same razor blade twice. It takes 12,000 razor blades to make the tail assembly for one 2,000-pound bomb. Roy'd wear a muff if he knew the blades he saves might make the egg that wrecks the German munitions dump. And rubber. That's the worst. No matter what you hear, there isn't enough. Don't let anybody waste it. Tires. Ask Chuck to go easy on those curbs, will you? See? I've been telling you. Yeah, I guess you're right. Murdered rubber's going to mean dead soldiers from now on. Five car tires make one bomber tire. Four battleships could be equipped with rubber used by weekend golfers and other athletes in three months of last year. That's a lot of rubber. Tell the folks, Mom, they've got to nurse those tires like their own babies. And here's one that really opened my eyes. Shellac from six jukebox records would waterproof the primer cups of 100,000 rounds and 30 caliber cartridge. Mom, Pete died because we didn't have the things we needed. The others, the millions in the fight now, will get two Japs for every Pete that was caught short. You folks will have to go without the little things so they can have bombers and guns and tanks that we didn't have. We know we can count on you.
No other American boy is going to die in a strange land because somebody at home didn't go without. I don't think I'll... What is it? What's wrong, man? I thought... It's nothing. Go on, Mother. Well, there isn't much more. I don't think I'll be able to write again soon. But don't worry about me. Tell Mary I think about her always. And God bless you all. John. So right. When you think what those guys are doing for us, it... Uh, Mrs. J.W. Lewis? Yes. Telegram. Right here, please. I'll oh, sign Deeply regret to inform you that your son, John W. Lewis, died at Batan, February 6th. In performance of his duty and in service to his country, Johnny G. Murray. I'll be back this evening, Roy. No other American boy is going to die in a strange land because somebody at home didn't go without. Well, that's odd. What? The telegram says Johnny died on the 6th. That's right. This letter was written on the 7th. 